Welcome to ISP FL6, Object Oriented Programming. Introduction to Object Oriented Programming. Object Oriented Programming models objects and their interactions in the problem space and the production of a system based on these objects and their interactions. Object Oriented Programming has been in practice for many years now. While the fundamental object-oriented concepts were first introduced via the class construct in the Simula programming language in the 1960s, the programming technique was only accepted with the advent of Smalltalk 80 more than a decade later. Object-oriented programming has become a long way. More and more programs are now designed and developed using this approach. What is object-oriented programming? What makes it attractive as an alternative programming approach? How does it differ from the traditional procedural programming approach? These questions will be discussed later. Since the real-world problem domain is characterized by objects and their interactions, a software application developed using the object-oriented programming approach will result in the production of a computer system that has a closer representation of the real-world problem domain that would be the case if the procedural programming approach is used. Object-oriented programming is a computer programming model that organizes software design around data or objects rather than functions and logic. So basically, your OOP is composed of our class, objects, properties, and methods. Let us consider a real-world situation. There are two persons, Benjamin and his wife, Bambi. They are customers of Home Care, a company dealing in luxurious furniture. Home Care sells a variety of sofa sets. Each sofa set is labeled with an identification number and a price tag. After viewing the sofa sets for an hour, Benjamin and Bambi decide to purchase a green leather 5-seater set. They approach Shan, a salesperson, to place their order. In making his request known to Shan, Benjamin sends a message to Shan. I would like to purchase this green leather 5-seater set. Can you please have it sent to me by next Wednesday? The message that Benjamin has sent to Shan is a take order message. It contains information such as the type of sofa set, which is a green leather 5-seater set, and the date of delivery, which is next Wednesday. This information is known as the parameters of the take order message. In response to Benjamin's message, Sean replies to Benjamin by returning the result of his request. The interactions between Benjamin and Sean in the above real-world situation can be represented in object-oriented programming terms. For instance, Benjamin and Sean are objects that interact by sending messages. Benjamin is thus a message-sending object, while Sean is a message-receiving object. Alternatively, we can label Benjamin as a sender and Sean as a receiver. The take order request from Benjamin to Shan is an example of a message. It may have additional accompanying information known as parameters or sometimes we call it arguments of the message. The fact that Shan responded to Benjamin's message indicates that the message is a valid message. Each valid message corresponds to a method that Sean uses to fulfill his responsibility to Benjamin. An invalid message, on the other hand, is one that the receiver does not have the capability to respond to. That is, 
the receiver does not have a corresponding method to match the message. For example, if Benjamin had requested a discount on the price, his request would have been rejected because Sean, being a salesperson, would not have the capability or a corresponding method to respond to the message. Simulation Object-oriented programming, such as object, message, and method, do provide a close representation of a real-world objects and their interactions. These concepts are thus suitable for simulating actual object interactions in real-world situations. It is the ability for modeling real-world problems that identified object-oriented programming as being suitable for simulation. The Simula programming language was designed in the early 1970s to provide simulation abilities using object-oriented concepts. Okay, let's have Java. Java was first introduced in 1995 as a simple and secure object-oriented programming language. It is a unique language in that being a new language at the time, it was able to attract a lot of interest from the computing community. Within two years after Java was launched, there were an estimated 400,000 Java programmers and over 100 books on Java programming. There are a few possible reasons for the phenomenal interest in Java. The year 1995 saw a maturing of web technologies and Java's multi-platform capability, which enabled a Java program to execute on any computer, was exceedingly attractive, especially on an open network like the Internet. Java is implemented via part compilation and subsequent execution on an interpreter implemented in software. Java applications are therefore object code portable as long as Java Virtual Machine is implemented for the target machine. The popularity of Java is also ironically due to its similarity with its close rival C++. Java takes the pain out of learning a new language by reusing much of C and C++. At the same time, safe programming practice in Java and language facilities for automatic memory management were benefits that were attractive to programmers on the verge of deserting their C or C++ camps. While the object-oriented programming framework promotes reusability of software and code, this very practice has been demonstrated in the rich set of class libraries seen in the Java language. The Java Foundation class libraries provide for windowing and graphical user interface programming, network communications, and multimedia facilities. Together, they demonstrate the practical and productive work done in Java. Object, Class, and Method Objects and Class So, an object attribute definition allows for objects to have independent attribute values. A class is a definition template for structuring and creating objects with the same attributes and methods. One major difference between objects and class is in the way attributes and methods are treated in objects and classes. A class is a definition about objects. The attributes and methods in a class are thus declarations that do not contain values. However, Objects are created instances of a class. Each has its own attributes and methods. The values of the set of attributes describe the state of the objects. So for example, Benjamin may have a larger budget and thus a larger budget value, say $2,000, than Bernie whose budget may be $1,000. Collectively, the values of an object's attributes represent the state of the object. Besides attributes, 
Benjamin and Bernie also exhibit some behavior typical of a customer. For instance, Benjamin and Bernie execute a method when making a purchase. Let us call this method as purchase. This method purchase is made up of a set of operations that Benjamin and Bernie would use to send a purchase request to a salesperson. Name, address, and budget are attributes, while purchase and get budget are methods of the two objects. Note that both objects share a common definition of attributes and methods. In fact, all customers of home care share the same set of attribute and method definitions. They all have attributes name, address and budget, and methods, purchase and get budget. In defining these objects, a common definition known as class is used. Being salespersons, Shan and Lara share similar attributes and methods as expected. Like the customers, their definition can be described by a class called salesperson with the following representation. Note that the definition of the salesperson's class is different from the customer's class since customers and salespersons behave differently. Customers make orders and salespersons take orders. Shan and Sarah are two salespersons at home care. They are thus capable of a behavior typical of a salesperson, for example, taking orders from customers. To fulfill their role as salesperson in a purchase transaction, Shan and Sarah perform a method. We shall call this method take order. Message and method. Objects communicate with one another by sending messages. A message is a method called from a message sending object to a message receiving object. A message sending object is a sender while a message receiving object is a receiver. An object responds to a message by executing one of its methods. Additional information known as arguments may accompany a method call. Such parameterization allows for added flexibility in message passing. The set of methods collectively defines the dynamic behavior of an object. An object may have as many methods as required. A message is composed of three components. An object identifier that indicates the message receiver. A method name corresponding to a method of the receiver and arguments. Additional information required for the execution of the method. So the message shan dot take order who item stock address and date is interpreted as follows shan is the receiver of the message take order is a method call on shan benjamin sent a message to shan when benjamin wanted to buy a sofa set the reasonable location for benjamin to send the message to shan is in benjamin's purchase method as shown indicated in bold. So as you can see, shan that take order is composed of arguments or parameters such as who, item, stock, address, and date, where it carries the value that the shan take order method would perform. Method. A message is valid if the receiver has a method that corresponds to the method named in the message and the appropriate arguments, if any, are supplied with the message. Only valid messages are executed by the receiver. The take order message is valid because Shan has a corresponding method 
and the required arguments, which is composed of who, stock, address, etc., are supplied with the message. In the above description, a message is sent from Shan to a warehouse object to inquire on the order and delivery schedule in Shan's take order method. If both conditions are satisfied, Shan will instruct the warehouse object to arrange for delivery. How Shan carries out the method is known only to Shan. Neither Benjamin nor the other customers know how Shan does it. For example, to check on the stock and delivery schedule with the warehouse, Shan may have called the warehouse over the phone or he may have checked the information against a list he had gotten from the warehouse. What Benjamin knows of Shan is that Shan is capable of responding to his request since his message to Shan is acceptable by Shan. In object-oriented programming, Benjamin and Shan are said to have followed the principle of information hiding. How Shan is going to satisfy Benjamin's request is hidden from Benjamin. In this way, Shan is free to select whatever way he chooses to satisfy Benjamin's request. He may phone the warehouse or look up the pre-prepared list and vice versa. Client and Server By executing a method, a message receiving object such as Shan is said to serve the message sending object which is Benjamin. A message receiving object is thus a server to a message sending object and the message sending object is thus a client of the server. If any object communication, there are at least a client and a server. The client sends a message to request a server to perform a task. The task is fulfilled by a message corresponding method of the server. In sending a message to the warehouse, Shan is said to be the client and the warehouse is said to be the server. Benjamin, Shan, and the warehouse are three objects involved in a communication process. Benjamin is the initiator with Shan and the warehouse as partners in the communication process. Creating Objects In object-oriented programming, objects are created from classes. Instances of customer objects are created from a customer class and a salesperson's object from a salesperson class. Created object instances are individuals with their own state. To illustrate, let us consider the example of counters. A counter is a device that keeps account of the number of times an event has occurred. It has two buttons, an initialize button that resets the counter to zero, and an add button that adds one to its present number.